Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, March 27th. Around 8 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. The models are in and the snow continues to flow into April. Holy macaroni. And our magnetosphere can't even handle a coronal hole stream. And that's the big story. Snow and cold making a comeback in the Northeast like a beast. Keep calm. It's boom time. Biting winds and snow showers have made the last weekend of March look and feel more like February in the Northeast as winter returns with a vengeance. AccuWeather meteorologists say the clock is ticking on the wintry weather, and it has already, well, arrived. And not only in the Northeast, but Minnesota. Minnesota weather, sloppy spring storm could bring plowable snow to Minnesota through the first week of April. Holy macaroni. Let's take a look at that snowfall totals as of 6 a.m. this morning. 7 a.m., my bad. Heavy lake effect snow, 8 to 10 inches in some areas from Buffalo South all the way down towards Cleveland. And we have a heavy pocket of snow here north of, in northern West Virginia, northeast in West Virginia, uh, 8 to 10 inches in the mountains. Little pocket here in, but this is just this morning. So these numbers are going to be epic tomorrow morning. And stay tuned while we report on them tomorrow because more snow is coming. And the winter uh, weather advisory has been extended with more snow expected in central New York coming out just moments ago. This update 20 minutes ago. The National Weather Service has extended a winter weather advisory and calls for more snow and wind gusts through late Monday morning. Syracuse, New York. It may be spring, ding, ding, but it will still feel like winter for a little longer after the National Weather Service extended a winter weather advisory for central New York. Cortland, Onondaga, Madison, and Southern Cayugas could see two to four inches and 35 mile hour, mile per hour gusts. Holy mackerel, I couldn't get that out. <whistles> now, weather roller coaster in Northeast Ohio, Grand Solar Minimum much? Now, winter weather conditions and scattered lake effect snow showers and flurries will continue Sunday evening. Into Monday morning rush, temperatures in the 20s in Ohio. Holy mackerel, it's going to be warming up into the 70s in just a few days. That is a grand solar minimum punch in the neck. Another punch in the neck is another round of severe weather possible on Wednesday in Alabama. And not just Bama. Who sold the hammer? Well, we were about to harvest our pig on Wednesday. Thank you, Beatrix. Now let's take a look at uh, that severe weather threat. It's going to develop here uh, Tuesday night right here as it moves through the Rocky Mountains and dumps some snow on the high elevations. Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, that severe weather threat is going to develop here from Nebraska down through Oklahoma, and it's going to quickly explode through Missouri and Arkansas there, it's going to be the tip-off. And even uh, Illinois is going to be picking up a little bit of that winter uh, severe weather threat. It's going to move all the way through the southeast, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, and off into the east there by Friday. So it should be a very spicy week, Wednesday and Thursday in the southeast. So heads up there. Now let's check out the snowfall potential in the colder regions. There's that little clipper moving through in the Northeast, going to be bringing uh, two to four inches of snow in upstate New York, maybe more up in the Northern Territories here, showing up to six to eight. So heads up. Also in Vermont, New Hampshire, you can be picking up snow. Um, and then on Monday, snow's going to be moving into the Sierras. Take a look at the West Coast, some Sierra snow, and then it's going to move into the Rockies Tuesday, and it's going to pick up heavy ele elevations. are going to be picking up one to two feet of snow in some regions, all the way down to central Arizona. So that's a bonus. Heavy snow up in Canada. It's going to be followed by several clippers and more snow systems as we move into April. Well, it's shaping up to be quite legendary. Critical fire weather in the central and southeast U.S. Much needed precipitation arrives in parts of California in just a day. Well, tomorrow morning, dry and gusty conditions will result in critical fire weather concerns across parts of the central and southeast U.S., Throughout Monday, meanwhile, locally heavy rainfall and high elevation snow will impact central and southern California tonight into Monday. Severe thunderstorms may develop across the southern plains, Mississippi Valley, and southeast Tuesday night into Wednesday. Mark my words, it's happening. There's already flood watches and warnings and heavy pressure on the groundwater there. So flooding will be an issue. Freeze warnings and watches up. Winter storm watches and warnings towards Tahoe as well as. Take a look at that. The Colorado Rockies. 
and we need the moisture. Seismic update. The biggest quake of note is right out here, 5.1 off the coast of Oregon, 10 kilometers. No tsunami warning, and I'm sure Mary Greeley reported on that. We have an East Coast Appalachian Fault in Tennessee, 2.5 in Sneedville. Oh, my. And this outlier way up north in Tixi, Russia. Yes, could be a nuke. Probably not. <laughs> now, we are waiting for some enhanced space weather in the form of a coronal mass ejection that came off of the sun just a few days ago that is going to be hitting us at the same time that this coronal hole stream hit about 30 hours ago. You can see here the plasma coming up, and then about 12 hours after that, the speed, so the density first, then the speed. And this is the coronal hole stream we're experiencing, which has put us into geomagnetic instability. Yes, for the last three, six, nine hours. Hours of powers, but we're looking for another pulse, uh, coronal mass ejection, to pump this all up at the same time. It could be happening right now. Do you see this jump? That could be it. I don't see a jump in density, though. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on this as it might be occurring now. Do you see what's happening here with the phi angle getting a little hazy? I think that's what we're experiencing now. So in three or six hours, come back, check out the telemetry and see what's going on there. We could get up to KP5, 6, potentially from the CME, but no higher. Now... Worldwide Volcano News Update, Tall Volcano, thousands flee after eruption in the Philippines. This actually made the mainstream. This is, I didn't even want to report on it. It's a very small eruption from Tall Volcano. Barely got to 10,000 feet. Yet, it was in the right direction that it affected civilians. Now, Tall Volcano, which sits in a picturesque, picturesque lake south of Manila, exploded with a short-lived burst on Saturday, in the, according to the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. It warned further eruptions were possible, which is said could trigger dangerous and fa fast-moving volcanic flows of gas and debris called Nue Ardon, as well as tsunami. Now, residents in five fishing and farming settlements around the lake were ordered to leave their homes, thankfully, in the third massive actuation in many is in as many years. So there's been three mass evacuations in the last three years around one of the country's most active volcanoes. Well, who knew? It would go down like that. Well, everybody, in fact. Now, moving our attention to the center of the Atlantic in the Azores, Sao Jorge Island in the Azores, people have been worrying about the seismic unrest. Now, the volcano seismic crisis on the island continues. Quakes decreased a bit after the first 48 hours, Increase a little after that, and then has shifted since then. So what we're going to do is blow up here the latest three-dimensional analysis of the quakes, show you where the, what they look like on the surface here, and then show you in the 3D what is going on under the ground. There it is. So you can see there is the massive uh, seismic swarm that began, a secondary swarm where the magma is in place, some subsequent... Uh, slowing. And when I saw this angle going up here, the same at La Palma, I thought it was coming up to the surface and would erupt. But the activity moved back down to the magma chamber level and has decreased. So this could just be waiting for another pulse from below before it puffs and passes, or it could just be stalling here, gathering its volatile gases and about to shoot off to the surface. This is not the most amount of surface activity that was back here. So there is no imminent eruption, but it could erupt at any time based on science. That's how much we know about that. And here we are over to Iceland. The whole country earthquakes during the last 48 hours, and there is still increased seismicity across the entire country, but nothing imminent. And we're keeping a close eye on that for you. Who knew? Now, a lot of people have been fear-mongering across the interwebs about La Palma and how it's about to end the world and this, that, and the other such. And it's all based on a small flurry of activity, which happened 72 hours ago, here, on the 25th, 48, my bad, 48 hours ago. With UTC, it's bringing out to 55. But this is nothing more than maybe some magma chamber collapse activity due to the last eruption and some resettling of the ground. Background here, the background repeats again. So there is nothing imminent, no intrusions, no eruption is imminent here. And we should see bouts of activity like this, like aftershocks 
happening for years to come at this volcano. Insano. Now, hidden channels beneath Yellowstone have been revealed for the first time ever. And I bet you Mary Greeley got a hold of this paper. But there are, in fact, no crickets here, but there is good information. And this is the graphical analysis coming from the paper. Now, this picture is a subsurface image produced from the SkyChem data with electrically conductive hydrothermal pathways in blue and electrically resistive lava flows in red. And what they showed is that these hydrothermal conduits up at the surface are connected by a river of hot liquid right there. And you can see the pinch points and where the hot hydrothermal liquids are coming from deep below here up into the UGB and deep below here and maybe pinching around or squirting up here into the FM. And these are basins in the Yellowstone Valley. Now, the knowledge of the Yellowstone has long had a subsurface gap, says geophysicist Steve Holbrook from Virginia Tech. It's like a mystery sandwich, but not anymore. These cold lava flows are covering hot hydrothermal regions, and they are connected by a subsurface river of steam and boiling water. And that basically confirms what we've said since the rip, since we started the channel, that the only type of eruption that will come from Yellowstone in the future is a hydrothermal eruption. It will just affect tens of thousands of people. It will not be a catastrophic volcanic eruption like the last one that happened there around 760,000 years ago. So there is that. Now we have tons of cool stuff to finish up on. The first is a paper we're going to be doing an entire podcast on in just uh, a day or so over at Magnetic Reversal News. Nearby Star could help explain why our sun didn't have sunspots for 70 years. And they're talking about the Maunder Minimum. And this paper, in fact, is called, in the title of it, Five Decades of Chromospheric Activity in 59 Sun-like Stars and New Maunder Minimum Candidate HD 1666. Can you believe that? Can you believe they actually had to include that in the paper? Holy macaroni. Now, Baum, Wright, and Lund, as well as Isaacson, published this paper on March 22nd, five days ago this year. And they present five decades of chromospheric activity measurements on 59 sun-like stars as time series analysis. And they include and extend the 35 years of stellar chromospheric activity observations from Mount Wilson, the survey from 66 to 2001, and the continued observations from Keck. So they, they got all the data in here, which is completely fantastic. And what they came up with is that they found a star that is acting like our star did during the Maunder Minimum. What does that mean? Well, let's get you up to speed. The Maunder Minimum and the Variable Sun-Earth Connection. This groundbreaking paper came out 20 years ago. Can you believe that? Let me double check this. Holy schnook. Holy shnikes. Yep, it's confirmed. Right after the acknowledgements, right here. This is from Cambridge, Massachusetts, winter of 2002. Two decades ago, good friend of the channel and of mine, Dr. Willie Soon and Steve Yaskel, published this paper, The Maunder Minimum and the Variable Sun-Earth Connection, which was ignored by everyone. But it should not be ignored by you. 323 pages of the most groundbreaking work. And, well, let's say in a few decades, they'll get the acknowledgements they deserve. Now, seven surprising benefits of beetroot powder. Hey, are you trying to kick up your game as far as nutrients and immune system and fix your health by stopping, stop going to the doctor. Doctors don't heal people. They make them sick. That's it. Hospitals don't heal you. They can set a bone, but they do not heal people. They make them sicker. They keep them alive for a long period of time. The pharmaceuticals, they keep you ill. The real solution is food. Food is the only medicine you need. And if you don't get a lot of good organic food, why don't you check out beetroot powder? This is one of the most nutrient-dense products on earth. It's economical. You can buy it organically. It is not beet juice powder. It's beetroot powder. 
Now, beetroot powder has protein, fiber, vitamin C, B6, folate, magnesium, potassium, manganese, iron, and more importantly, nitric acid. Just one teaspoon of your average beetroot powder is the equivalent of an entire beet. You can add it to anything. Smoothies, baked goods, soups. I drink it every day and eat it every day. And there are seven surprising benefits to beetroot powder that I'm sure you didn't know about. It could lower your blood pressure. It will boost your brain power. It will improve your athletic performance. It will fight inflammation, which is the cause or the side effect of every disease. It supports liver health. It encourages weight loss. And it can help that ever so pesky erectile dysfunction. Why wouldn't you eat the beets or the beetroot? Do it now. Do it now. Squatterman 2022, the Plasma Petroglyph Tour, the first of its kind, the most unique experience in a lifetime. Now, I know a lot of you are hurting from inflation and the cost of fuel, but the cost of this conference is low. We kept it as low as possible. It's going to be a very limited number of tickets, a unique group, and they are gobbling them up quickly. For instance, the private tour only has 30 spots and there are only 20 left. And I promise I will take you to this petroglyph that very few pe people on earth have seen. It's five feet wide and four feet high. And it's a bighorn sheep with an alien on top next to 12 dots around a circle that could represent, well, we'll talk about it on the rock. See some of the most unique plasma petroglyphs on the planet at the first annual Squatter Man. This event is in Ruidoso, New Mexico, at the convention center, which is 111 Sierra Blanca Drive in Ruidoso, New Mexico. And the first day are the tours, the general tour, the private tour, which is an extreme tour. If you're not in top physical condition, do not even attempt to come on the private tour with Rex Bear and I. We're going to be looking at rattlesnakes. We're going to be looking at scorpions. We're going to be looking at heat, desert sand, no trails, extreme desert environment. We're going to have all the protocols in place for a safe trip for those that opt in to the private tour. We're also going to have a general tour, which goes up the main trail with Ransom 420, the Freedomist, who is been at this site more than any other human that we know. And then it's going to be followed by the conference on Sunday, May 15th at the Ruidoso Convention Center, where we're going to have multiple talks. We're going to have a roundtable discussion with all the people that went on the tours that are at the conference. It's going to be an awesome time. And it will be the final event. Well, we're not going to announce it just yet, but there will be a special event at the end of the conference to cap off the whole weekend. So get your tickets now before they're sold out. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world where fact checkers are paid for by the oligarchs to give you fake information and propaganda, well, you can always count on the Oppenheimer Ranch Project to stick their foot up the... <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon. And support our work and be safe. We love you. That's about the knowledge. Mm -hmm.